we didn't start off as a technology company. We actually started off as a microfinance institution founded in 2009. Uh, and we founded Missoni, Kenya in 2009, where we integrated the entirety of our, our IT platform with M-Pesa to enable clients to repay with mobile money. Uh, this, was, uh, this was very, very new and innovative at the time. And our goal was to reduce the costs and improve the efficiency of the microfinance organization. We started our operations in May 2010, uh, and this is the opening of our first brunch, actually, where we had a little band and a little celebration. Uh, and since then, uh, over the last two years, we've grown to 10,000 clients or so uh, across five branches. We have a, well, dispersed approximately 10 million of credits over the last two years, and that's over around 35,000 loans or so. Um, Separately to that, we also founded a company called Missoni BV, which I represent in Amsterdam, which was responsible for developing all of the technology that was used by Missoni Kenya, the microfinance institution. We were a young startup company, and so we didn't have the resources to build all of the technology to build a new platform ourselves. So we used a variety of off-the-shelf packages that we linked together in Amsterdam and licensed, uh, licensed as a single unit to our microfinance institution in Maseni, Kenya. Uh, and on my screen now, hopefully you can see uh, some of the different components of our platform that we built. Uh, one of them was obviously the, uh, the client and loan management um, at the top there. We integrated with M-Pesa, as I said. Uh, we developed a tablet, an app that runs on Android tablets that is used by our loan officers in the field to do client registrations, loan applications, and, uh, and group registrations. And we built a whole variety of reports uh, through Jasper reports. And we grouped them all together into a single platform and, uh, and licensed them to Missoni Kenya. Uh, that platform works really, really well for Missoni Kenya. But it had the disadvantage that, that we were very dependent upon lots of third parties for whenever we wanted to do additional development, whenever we had customizations, and, um, and whenever we wanted to roll out the platform to other microfinance institutions, we were also uh, heavily dependent upon the third parties who we had to pay license fees for. Uh, and it was at that stage where we decided to start looking around in the market to see if there were, uh, to see if there were any other platforms uh, that we could use that would enable us to significantly reduce our costs while improving the quality of microfinance technology to not just Missoni Kenya, but to lots and lots of microfinance institutions around the place. Um, and that's where we came up with MLight, which stands for Missoni Light, and is the platform we built in combination with Mythos X. Uh, just a few extra bits of, uh, of background to the work we've done. Um, I think I covered that. Uh, yeah, I think I covered pretty much all of that actually. So I'm going to jump straight into uh, straight into the actual MLight demo, and we'll start off just by logging in. I would say to everyone at the moment that uh, this is still a demo product, uh, so it's only recently, well, it's not actually gone live with any clients. We expect to go live with our first clients uh, in the next two weeks. Um, so there are occasional bugs here and there, but, um, but so far uh, we're very happy with what we've achieved so far in, uh, in close collaboration with the Mifos X team. So now that I've logged in, you can obviously see the home page, which is we call the dashboard, and on the dashboard you can see uh, we give a variety of graphs to the users of the microfinance institution so that they can see core metrics such as their OLB, um, the PAR per branch, and the client numbers. Uh, you can see that when you hover over, you can actually see the, the hard metrics. So you can see that in a particular branch, you have uh, 18 Premier League clients uh, versus 13 prospect clients. All of the data, I'll just say now, is, uh, is dummy data. Uh, rather than use uh, data from Missoni Kenya, we decided that we would, uh, we would uh, to make it universal, universally applicable, we would use footballers for all of the clients, we would use the football teams for all of the groups, and we would use the football leagues, such as the Premier League or La Liga, for the actual branches. This dashboard is customizable by the user, um, so you can minimize the, uh, the different graphs you can see. Uh, you can move the graphs uh, you can move them around like so, uh, and when you log in and log out, uh, the system will remember your 
uh, remember your preferences so that when you log in again, you have your personalized interface. Uh, and at the moment, this is, this is maybe not overly useful when we only have three different graphs, but we plan to add uh, a whole variety of additional graphics and data uh, onto, the, uh, onto the dashboard so that depending on what type of user you are, whether you're a branch manager or someone from head office, you can decide which data you find the most useful. Over just above these, you can see our quick links. Uh, so these are bits of functionality that we think are, are very, very commonly used. And um, so entering a new client, entering a loan application, or a repayment. And it's just designed to make it a bit easier and faster to access that functionality. The more traditional route is by going through this menu bar at the top, where we have clients, where you can register a client or see a list of all of the clients. The same for groups. You can give savings or loan products to the clients. You can show a variety of different types of reports targeted at different areas of the institution. We have our accounting functionality. And uh, finally, if, you are a, if you're an administrator, you can see all of the configuration uh, of setting up branches, products, uh, roles, and users. Um, the final feature on the dashboard is just the search feature at the top right, where you can enter the name or a few letters from the name of any client or any group, uh, and it will automatically find it. And then you can click on it and immediately be taken to lots of information about that client, uh, where you can also see if they have any accounts. And my internet is just going a little bit shaky at the moment, so apologies there. Can I just do a quick check that anyone can hear me, or that someone can hear me? Yo. Yes, we can. Oh, I can okay. hear you. That camera, we can still hear you, yes? <laughs> We're fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, loads and loads of people saying, thank, uh, saying that you can hear me there, great. Um, let me just see if I can work out what's going wrong here. OK, it seems to have recovered. Um, and so that is a, that's essentially where we are with the home page and the dashboard, uh, which is our, our very basic introduction uh, to what we've, uh, what we've built, uh, very much uh, on top of all of the work that the Mephos X team have done. Uh, so I think uh, the next stage of the demo would actually just be to register a client and go through the new client registration workflow. So, Apologies for the delay here. Uh, yeah, so now we're in, and hopefully you can see the, uh, the new client workflow. So my internet connection seems to be really breaking on and off at the moment, which is not ideal. Um, but you can see that along the top of the workflow here, uh, we have all of the different phases of the client registration process. So jumping to client information, client identification information, adding the business details, the next of kin, and the overview. Um, we have the option of selecting whether it's an individual client, uh, in which case we would select the branch and we can add to an existing group, or you select the, uh, or you can add to an existing group, and in this case, we would just enter the first three letters of any group that we are trying to, uh, uh, trying to add the client to, and you can see that it just pulls up, uh, it just pulls up all, of the, all the groups linked to those three letters. Uh, so we're selecting Manchester United, we can select the loan officer as well, uh, and once we're happy with that, um, we'll click next. And immediately you get taken to the uh, the actual KYC information of the client. And I'll just quickly enter a client here. Uh, we've built in some validations on uh, on certain fields, such as the phone number. 
Um, the MFI, we, uh, we built this demo environment for is in Kenya, where they have uh, a, all the phone numbers are 10 characters. So you can see here that if the phone number is only 9, it gives you a warning. Uh, and you can't see it, but you can't actually enter more than 10. Um, I will put... Um, and once we've entered all of the actual client information, we can click Next, and we immediately now get taken to the next stage of the workflow, which is adding the unique identification information, which we can do just by clicking Add. You can select the document type, which is the unique ID, uh, and uh, I would select passport, uh, so national ID card, for example. Um, I'll enter a, a random number. And uh, the way the system works is the users, so whichever the MFI using the platform is, can configure the drop-down menu of the document types. And the system will only allow you to enter a unique identifier linked to the particular document type. So I wouldn't be able to enter that again in the future. Once I'm happy, then I can add it. And you can see it's been added. And we now click Next. Now we get asked to enter the business details that link to the client. A very similar process. Um, and we can enter information about the business. Um, as ever, we would click Next, uh, and the final bit of information we need to enter in order to, enter, to register the client, it relates to the next of kin. No, I have... Uh, we can He's just the explaining. Hmm? He's just explaining. So how much time uh, will take? I can't read it too. So the final stage of the client registration process, once we've entered the client information, selected the group, entered the national ID information, the business details, and next of kin, uh, in all of the m uh, workflows, we give an overview so the user can see all of the information that they've entered, including uh, what the stuff they've just captured. At that point, they can click Save. And when you save a client, what this does is it saves the client with the status pending approval. Um, so this client still can't be given loans yet. It's part of the uh, what kind of the checks and balances we've built into the system. A second user will need to come along and actually approve. And again, my connection seems to be playing up at the moment, so apologies there. Okay, there we go. The client's being saved. And typically, what I would now need to do, uh, I'm actually logged in as a super administrator now, so I have the rights, but normally a second user would need to log in. They would go to clients. They would go to clients who are pending approval, uh, and you can see the details of the client who is pending approval that we just entered here. Um, if this list was a, long, a lot longer, so let's say your microfinance institution had entered 200 clients and all of them were pending approval that day, but you just wanted to search for Patrice, then you can use this little search feature at the top right, which will search for anything in this table here. Um, we're just going to complete the process now. We can see all the information we captured, uh, and I can either edit it or I can approve. Uh, and that client's now approved. And if I just jump up here, you can see that we can search for the client from the dashboard. So in a very, very basic way, uh, that's the workflow for how we would register a client. The workflow for how we register a group is very similar, uh, just with a little bit less KYC information. Um, but in the interests of uh, trying to speed through as much of this demo as possible in a short space of time, uh, I think the next stage will be to give, uh, to give the client we just created a loan. We can either do this by going to products loans, as I am here, or I could just click, click on the quick link, new loan application, over here. When I go to products loans, 
uh, I get the option of seeing all of the loans that are currently entered in the system, which I can search for if necessary, or I can create a new loan. And the first thing I do when I create a new loan is search for the client I want to give the loan to. And then I can select the product that I want to, uh, I want to uh, give to the client. And um, we've got a whole variety of different products here. I'm just going to select um, one that we've been using a fair bit recently. And now we get another one of our M-Lite workflows, where you gradually, step by step, get taken through the process of creating the loan and allocating it to the client. We've, uh, using the default settings from Ethos X, we've pre-configured um, the loan size, loan term, number of repayments, just to make it easier for the user. Um, but obviously, we can, we can change this if we want. Uh, I can make this a 24-week loan. Uh, I could change it to weeks, months, however I wanted to do it. And I could change the repayment frequency. Once I'm happy that with the actual, uh, the actual loan characteristics and click next, I select, so I select the loan purpose and all these drop down menus here, whenever you see a drop down like this, it's configurable by the microfinance institution um, and we can select when the repayments are starting from and we'll select next week, next, uh, well, a week from today. Once you click next, you get given the option of allocating charges to the account We've already got a charge that's being pre-configured and added to the account, but, um, but you can also add more if necessary. Um, and oh well, uh, understandably, uh, you can add percentage uh, charges or flat charges. Uh, the next stage is to enter any collateral items related to the, uh, to the loan product. And we just click add. We would select from our drop-down of collateral items. I've selected television. And you can see we've now added this collateral item. We can add as many as we like, uh, or if necessary, we can delete ones if we make a mistake. Uh, the, well, the final stage of actually entering information is adding guarantors to the, uh, to the loan application. Uh, we can either just search for existing clients in the system just by entering details from their name. Um, or if I click on group members, I can actually see a list of all of the uh, all of the other members of the group, and I can add those clients who I wish. Um, if I want to enter a guarantor for the client who is not a member of uh, either the group or is entered into the system as a client at all, you can use the new guarantor functionality uh, to add a completely external person, and that information will also be captured. But for the time being, um, we've captured four guarantors this link. And we will click next. We get taken to the repayment schedule. Uh, on the repayment schedule, you can see that when we set up this product, uh, we added in a grace period of two weeks on both principal and interest. Uh, and then over the remaining 24 weeks, the loan principal of 10,000 is divided between the 24 weeks. Um, you can see the balance slowly decreasing. Um, and you can see the uh, breakdown between principal and interest and the total amount due. Uh, all of that looks, uh, looks accurate. And so we'll click next. And as ever with MLight, the final stage of the process is an overview of all of the different, uh, all of the different bits of information that you've captured and entered for the loan, including the charges, the collateral, and the guarantors. Uh, and then you would click save. So we've also built the make a checker principle. Um, we've also built uh, the make a checker principle into uh, uh, into MLight. Uh, we're still logged in as um, uh, as a super user, so I can actually see all of the loans pending approval. But normally, a different user would have to log in uh, and access the pending approval. And here we can see the loan that's pending approval, a true server, um, and we can decide to approve it. We can review all the information, approve. Add a note. And now this will appear under loans awaiting disbursement. As ever, we can review all the information. We can undo the approval if necessary, but on this occasion, I'm going to disperse. When you disperse, because with MLight, we've integrated with M-Pesa, uh, you can choose to, enter, to carry out your disbursement either, well, with a variety of different channels. So the main ones would either be cash or M-Pesa, 
but we've got a couple of other examples here in case you were carrying out a transfer to a bank account. Uh, we will just select cash for this example, um, which normally would also be a check, and we would enter a specific check number. And an eight. Uh, and that loan has now been dispersed. Uh, so in a, in a very basic way, uh, we've so far gone through the client registration workflow and the loan application workflow. Uh, Ed, uh, I think the next stage would normally be for me to jump on and demonstrate some of the reports uh, and some of the other functionality, but I'm not sure how you normally structure these tools. So I, I wanted to just check with you that we were still on track for time and, uh, and open it up and see if there was anything you wanted to ask. Yeah, I think it's fine to just continue on, Cameron, because the main uh, part of the agenda for today's call was to get through your demo, and I think that's what most folks are interested in seeing. So if anybody has any questions right now, they can share them, or Cameron, continue on with the reporting demo, and then we can save questions for the end. Well, here is the external ID. I mean, the name you are going to search, but you, something is required is an ID, unique ID. So I think you were asking about a unique ID, yeah? I mean, yeah, you always search from the name. I mean, you always search by a name. I mean, instead of that, the, the, it requires a membership ID. So it should be unique for every, every customer. Yep, so when I, uh, if I go to a client, You can see we also have the account numbers of the clients, and I can also uh, search yeah. for the for these unique account numbers, which are completely unique for the client. They're generated by the system for that client. No, no, this is, these are the account numbers. I mean, the person you have given the loan, but if I found only the person and how many loans he has right now, so how can I find out? Okay, uh, so if I want to go and view, well, view the client, I've just given out a loan to, then by searching for the client, we see all the client details. Under accounts, we can see that he has the loan account demo 2 that we've just given him. He doesn't have any savings products. And if we wanted to, uh, to view more information about the loan account that we've given him, uh, we can click view. And we get to see, we get to see all of the details of the loan account including the repayment schedule, any transactions applied on the account, and well, we can also make a repayment mm -hmm. if we choose to. Well, you know, so it's a really good question. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered it correctly. Yeah, I do, Adel. The one thing is that at the client registration, you ask the loan officer name and the branch you have to select. I mean, if the branch login comes, the, he, he just finds his own field officer, Sorry, I, I couldn't quite hear the question there. Could you repeat it, please? Yeah, I mean, you are logging with the administrator, right? So all the branches are showing on your ID. If the person who belongs to the particular branch, uh, if, in, if he, if he uh, logs in with his ID in a particular branch, so at that time he found only the field officer in his branch, or the system uh, shows I, all the... That's a really good point, actually. Now, at the moment, we haven't built in that, that check, but I think it's a very good suggestion. And, uh, and one we will be. And uh, when, you, uh, when you register a client, you require some loan officer. And at the time, at the moment when you start uh, opening the loan account, they require again the loan officer. I mean, why these two, two is once it, the once it, the client is associated with one loan officer, I mean that data should come into the uh, at the time of giving loan. Uh, yes, but a lot of the clients, a lot of the microfinance institutions we work with. Um, the clients, before they have a loan, are allocated to a particular loan officer. And then, depending on the type of loan they're given, um, they might have different loan officers for different loans. Well, uh, so many questions, but uh, I mean, best of luck, and it's a wonderful, wonderful application. Uh, it's doing on. My, my, my best wishes is with you. Well, thank you very much for the, for the questions. I think they're very useful questions. 
uh, and I'm, I'm sure that there will be lots of other bits of functionality that we'd like to add in the future. Uh, but I would really like to defer uh, the praise for this platform, which we very gratefully received, but I'd really like to defer it to, to the Mephos X guys because we've built very heavily and, uh, and really, really benefited from all of the work that they've done. Um, okay, jumping on, uh, if I just go into reports, just show some of the reports we've built, and we haven't built anywhere near the, the large number of reports we want to yet, um, but we have an example of just a few. Uh, that we've gone through. Uh, the most common report, and the most common report that we've always used in Masoni Kenya, is the group report. Uh, and this is the report that's used by the loan officers when they go out to a group meeting uh, to keep track of the repayments of the different group members. Uh, so you select the branch, and you would select the, uh, the group, and then you draw on the report. Okay, and immediately you get shown the group report here. Uh, you can see the office, the loan officer, and the group name. Along the left-hand side of the screen, you can see all of the members of that group, including their client IDs. Uh, the reason for the different formats of the client IDs, by the way, is we've been, uh, we've been jumping around over the best way to automatically generate the internal ID. Uh, we've now settled on, uh, on this solution, uh, but, uh, but in the past we've had different approaches. Um, for the, you see the product that the client has been given, you see the loan term of that product, you see the whether it's weeks or months, uh, and uh, uh, the outstanding loan balance, the amount that was repaid in a particular week, the amount that was respect, expected to be repaid during that particular week, um, and when the next repayment is due, and the amount of the next repayment. You also see whether the client is in arrears or not, uh, and if the client has paid ahead of their loan schedule. Uh, and you can see that we entered uh, Patrice Evera uh, earlier, well, 10 minutes ago or so, you can see that all of these products are, are exactly the product we set up for him. No repayments have been made yet. That's his outstanding loan balance so far. Um, we're going to add a little bit more, um, a little bit more to this report over the next week or so, primarily also a column on the value of the savings that the client has as well. Uh, but in general, uh, the loan officer is meant to uh, download this report in the morning. They can download it to Excel, PDF, or CSV. Uh, and at that point, they can take it out to their group meeting. Uh, a question we often get asked at this point is, that's great, you can tell which clients are in arrears, but how do we, get, keep, how do we keep track of our, of our aging of the arrears? Um, and there are two main reports, or three main reports, but two that I'll show now, uh, that allow us to do the, the portfolio aging. Uh, and the main one is the branch portfolio report. And you run this for a particular branch. And you can see immediately that you see the total portfolio size for the branch, you see the PAR for the branch, and you see the name of the branch. Along the left-hand side in this report, you see all of the loan officers linked to that branch. NOL stands for number of loans. Um, the portfolio size is the size of the outstanding portfolio. Uh, and now we show the number of on-time loans. So how many loans are, are not in arrears, basically? Uh, what's the number, the amount, and the percentage? Uh, and then we break down into the 1 to 30 day band, the 31 to 60, 61 to 90, more than 90, and total PAR. And again, this can be downloaded into Excel, PDF, CSV, etc. cetera. Um, and this is a very useful report to be used by branch managers or members of the management team. Uh, however, uh, it's not as useful. Well, sorry, what we found is actually one to 30 days is an extremely large band. Um, and the difference between having a client who's one to seven days in arrears versus 23 to 30 days in arrears is significant in terms of uh, your likelihood of being able to recover those funds. So that's why we built the branch PAR one to 30 report, which I'll just show you now. And you can see that in format, it's very, very similar. So we have the totals at the top, we have the loan officers listed along the left, number of loans, portfolio size. Uh, the main difference is instead of the bands we showed previously, uh, we now show all clients one day in arrears. Um, and this is traditionally in the MFI in Sony Kenya. Uh, this is what's used every single day by the branch manager. The first thing they open is this report. And um, 
and they will immediately know where to focus their attention. So if, uh, if David Moyes, he doesn't on this report, but if he had six clients one day in arrears, then he would immediately be called into the office uh, and they would work out the way in which they would uh, try and recover their funds from those clients who were one day in arrears. Um, we then break it down into 1 to 7, 8 to 14, 15 to 22, 23 to 30, and then we stop at 1 to 30. Uh, so this report is, is more of a, a branch operational report rather than a management, um, or a management report, and it's designed to, uh, to enable uh, the branch managers and loan officers to be completely transparent about which, which, where the performance is weakening, when the portfolio quality is getting worse. A few of the other reports. Um, one of them is obviously the loan officer arrears report. Um, so let's say we've looked at the PAR one to thirty report. Uh, we've seen that um, we've seen that whoever it might be, Brendan Rogers has a large number of clients in arrears. We immediately want to know which ones they are. We can run the report uh, in the same way in all of the MLAC reports with the totals along the top, and then we can see that, uh, that this particular loan officer has two clients. Uh, both in one group, uh, who are in arrears, and you can see all of the information about their loan, the amount that they are in arrears, the number of days that they are in arrears, uh, and the other the other feature that we track is the days since the last payment, uh, and we find this a little bit useful just because it can demonstrate a a willingness to repay, if not the ability to repay. So it's not quite the case here, but if Luis Suarez was 24 days in arrears but had repaid and made a small payment one day or two, three days ago, uh, then you know that he's still maybe active, he's still trying to repay. Um, it's nothing to do with an unwillingness to repay, which is useful information for the loan officer to have. Uh, we've got a few more here. I'll just show the client report. Here's the final one. So I'll just run it for Wayne Rooney. And as ever, we have the summary information at the top. And now we jump into information about his loans. Uh, so he has one loan. Uh, we see the loan officer, the loan status, uh, all the information about the loan. And we can see all of the transactions he's made on that loan. Uh, if he had a savings product, we would also show the client savings on this report as well, but it's automatically been taken off because Wayne does not have any savings yet. Uh, and that is the, that's the core of the branch reports. Uh, jumping up to a higher level for the portfolio reports, uh, we have three main reports currently developed and a few more in development. One of them is the portfolio report uh, that I won't show you because it's very similar to the branch portfolio report. It, it just Instead of showing you all the loan officers, it shows you the different portfolio quality for each branch. Um, we have the OLB totals. Uh, and this is our this is our giant data dump report, basically. Uh, so this is where we can show all the loans that have been given out uh, within a set period of time. I'll run it for a particular branch. So you can see that in the last week, we have given out all of these loans here, uh, and we show lots of information such as the loan amount, the OLB, the loan officer, data disbursement, uh, the actual information about the loan. Uh, and I've only run it for a short time period here. Um, but traditionally, uh, this can be used by, uh, by anyone who wants to do a little bit more additional analysis uh, on the data without having to request a new report. And the final time for is the client, where we basically just show the breakdown of the number of clients in the system broken down between the number of the different statuses of the clients. And there are a couple of errors on this report uh, at the moment. It's still a demo. Um, such as the total borrowers uh, should actually add up to all of the people who are funded, and that's currently being shown under new borrowers. But um, but the idea is that anyone can have a look at this, and they can see uh, they can see which clients are active, uh, which clients are, are still have a loan but maybe haven't done any repayments for the last two three months, uh, which clients. Oh. Sorry, can uh, can you still hear me? Uh, my go to meeting just popped up, warning me that something had gone wrong. Yeah, it's people chatting. But I we can, audio. yeah, we can I still hear a camera. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. So the idea of this report is to down into all of the different statuses of clients. 
Uh, one one that we find useful is the dormant non-funded borrowers. Uh, this is clients who had a loan, so they've previously been an active client, um, but they now don't have a loan. They fully repaid their previous loan, uh, and normally that would mean that they're just non-funded. Um, and it's a little bit different to a prospect, which is a client who, uh, who's never been given a loan, they've just recently been entered into the system. But a dormant non-funded uh, means that within even three months after they received the previous loan, they still haven't been given a new loan. Uh, and we find it really, really useful to be able to start following up on those clients uh, and wondering why they aren't still engaging or working with Nasani. So that's, uh, that's the introduction to our reports. We've got many more in the pipeline, but those are the ones we've developed so far. Um, I haven't jumped into the financial reports yet, and that's deliberate because I'd like just to jump into the accounting first uh, and show you how we've set up the accounting in MLITES before showing you the financial reports. So under the accounting, the first page you get taken to is the chart of accounts. And on the chart of accounts, you can obviously see all of the different GLs, all of the different accounts that you've entered. If we wanted to add a new account, uh, that's very possible to do. You just click Add Account. You can specify the account name, uh, the GL code, the type of account it is, and whether manual entries are allowed or not, and a brief description. I'm not going to actually do that because we've got hundreds of accounts that don't really do anything at the moment in the system. Uh, but you can see in very much similar, or exactly the same as how MifoSex does it, uh, you can add your own GL accounts uh, and you can customize how you use them and the names and the GL codes. Once you've set out the accounts, then you can carry out journal entries related to the account. Um, so you can select that you might want to debit office party and credit, uh, credit petty cash. Um, if the amount that I try and credit is um, different to the, uh, to the amount I'm trying to debit, then obviously you get a warning, and I can either add another account if I'm doing multiple credits to a single debit, or I can just uh, make sure the two amounts add up. I select the branch. I can select the booking date, and I can enter some references or a description if I chose to. Yeah, I'll delete that. And now we've carried out that journal. Um, uh, you can see the journal entry that we've entered here. Uh, you can see a bit more information on it by clicking on the I to the right, including the transaction ID, the office, the booking date. Etc. We didn't enter a description before. I can reverse the transaction if I choose, but I won't for the time being. And the bit of functionality I jumped over there is you can obviously filter for the accounts, for the offices, uh, and the to and from dates for when you want to run your journal, uh, when you want to pull out a list of all the journals that have been made in this particular period of time, or you can just run them all and use the table here and the search feature here to search for anything in the table. So if I only wanted to pull out journals that affected group loans, then I would start typing in that and I'd see only journals that affect group loans. Uh, close periods, I think, uh, are fairly simple. Um, you can simply choose to close a financial period for a particular branch, you select the branch and the closing date. And at that point, you wouldn't be able to make any journals backdated into that close period. Um, so that's a very brief overview of the of the accounting functionality we've built in. For financial reports, we have three main financial reports. We have your daily trial balance. Which will run from the beginning of the month. And you can just see all of the journal entries, or all of the movements that have occurred in that time period on, uh, on all of the accounts in the system. So you can see the GL codes, the name of the accounts, the opening balance, closing balance, and the debit and credits as they move between them. Uh, and obviously, the two should always match up. Uh, you can always download to Excel, PDF, or CSD. And it's uh, well, a fairly typical trial balance, I guess. 
we have the balance sheet. which just shows all of the assets and the liabilities. Um, we don't have very many liabilities at the moment in the system, um, but then it shows you the difference between the two as your retained earnings. And the final financial report that we have is the profit and loss, or the, in, uh, the income statement. Even. And you can see here that over, well, just today, We've made a certain amount of income on the group loan portfolio interest and joining fees, and we've got an account called Cisco Expenses, where, we are, where we've incurred some expenses from a manual journal entry. And so that's the overview of the accounting functionality and financial reports. Um, I think there are, there are there's quite a lot more that I would very happily demo. I'm not sure how much time we have. I might just jump in very quickly to, uh, to the MMT related activities, which you are uh, all about integrating with M-Pesa. Uh, this has only just been released to the platform, uh, so bear with me while I run through it, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to give you a good idea of how we integrate with M-Pesa. We can either from configuration jump to MMT services, or we can use the MMT import quick link over on the right. Um, you immediately get taken to our mobile money transfer or M-Pesa page, um, we obviously have to put in some, some accurate text in here rather than the generic stuff. But we have two options. We can either generate an outgoing file or we can import the incoming file. Um, it's not possible to do a full integration for incoming transactions on M-Pesa in Kenya at the moment. However, the way the M-Pesa interface works um, is you can log on to the interface, you can select a time period, and you can download an XML statement of all of the transactions, so the 1,500 or however many repayments that have occurred over a particular day. Um, once, you have, uh, once you've downloaded that to your desktop, the idea is that you can use this, uh, use this bit of functionality here. You can browse, uh, you can select the file from the desktop, and you can submit. Um, once you've done that, the system will automatically, in the background, start picking up all of the client IDs, uh, sorry, all of the phone numbers from the client repayments and automatically allocating them based on the repayment code in, um, uh, in the actual M-Pesa account fields uh, to allocate it to the correct client savings or loan account. For the outgoing, it works in a similar way. Um, as you saw, when we did a disbursement to Patrice Evra earlier, um, we had the option of selecting whether it was a cash or a, or a mobile money or an M-Pesa disbursement. If we selected cash, the idea is that the branch manager has written out a check or handed cash uh, and actually handed it to the loan officer to take to the client. However, if you select M-Pesa, uh, at that point, you need to go and generate an outgoing file. Um, you would then generate the outgoing file. I'm not sure we've actually selected any, uh, any cash payments over the last however long, uh, so this won't pull anything up. But once we've generated the outgoing file, uh, it automatically... Uh, once you generate the outgoing file, it will automatically uh, pull out all of the repayments, including the amount, the client phone number uh, that you have entered over the whole day. So that might be 200 or 300 loan disbursements, um, which is then in the CSV format that's recognized by M-Pesa, uh, at which point it takes three to five minutes or so to log on to the M-Pesa interface and actually carry out the disbursement. Obviously, when processing about 1,500 repayments a day, a certain number of them are going to not be recognized. Maybe the client, uh, the client might have repaid using, uh, using someone else's phone that hasn't been entered into the system, or they might have, uh, they might have made an error in entering the code that, allocates the, that specifies the account to which they want to repay. Uh, the, way we, the way we do it for clients at the moment is we don't ask them to enter their whole account number. Instead, we just ask them to enter uh, LR, for loan repayment, if they're making a loan repayment, or CA for security collateral, which is the compulsory savings, or VS for voluntary savings. And all of those payment codes, so LR, VS, or CA, are completely customizable by the microfinance institution. Um, and the idea is that instead of having to remember your whole account number, they just have to enter LR. Um, we know it's a loan repayment, and therefore we know to allocate it to the client's loan account. But let's say instead of entering LR, they actually enter um, 
SB, uh, the idea is that those repayments would, rather than be allocated to the client's account, be automatically inputted into the suspense list where they can be manually allocated by the user in the microfinance organization. That's a very brief overview um, and deliberately brief also because we've only just introduced this, these workflows into the system and they need to be finalized. But a very brief overview of how we currently do m pesa integration in the system. I think I'll, I'll take a, a brief pause there and throw it open to any questions or suggestions. Uh, and Sandra is also on hand to help out with uh, any of more, the more technical questions of how we've built this and how we've integrated it into MIFOS X. Hello. I'm still here, Cameron. Hi, Cameron. Um, just wondering, you, you, you kind of glanced over the group screens. Is there any chance of just getting a quick look at the group area? Uh, yes, of course. Yes, no of course. Uh, so groups work in a similar way or a similar workflow. Uh, sorry, there's a bit of an echo going on with me now. I'm not sure. It seems to have gone. So we would go to groups and create groups. The first thing you get asked is to enter the actual information related to the group. Uh, and we would enter, we can attach the group to a particular branch and we can attach to a particular loan officer. Uh, if the group has their own registration number, so especially the groups in Kenya might be registered with the government already, they might have um, a unique registration number. And just to interrupt you, I think you paused your screen before you went into this question. Yep, now you're back. I think we lost your voice now, Ken. Right, I'm back again now. Yep, I can see the screen and I can hear me. Yes, yep. Okay, well, okay. apologies again. Apologies this is my again. fault, and I'll, I'll go through that again. So, from the dashboard, you go to Groups, Create Group. The first thing you do is enter the actual group name. You can allocate the group to a branch, and you can select the loan officer for the group. The group might have an external registration number, if they're an already registered group with the local government or municipal authority. And you can select the meeting location, the meeting day, and the meeting frequency. Uh, so some fairly basic information just about the group itself. Uh, most importantly, then you would enter clients to the group. Um, What I'm struggling with now is I can only enter individual clients who are linked to my branch. So, <laughs> I just jump. So it's automatically blocking me from actually yeah, entering any clients because there are no clients bit, yeah. who are not in a group that I can think of. What we did here is we decided um, uh, so in the institutions we sorry, work Sandra, with. Go for it. Clients cannot be in multiple groups at the same time. So as part of the UI, we uh, we decided to make sure that you can only add clients to a group that currently you have not been attached to another group already. There we go. So 
So we select the meeting day, meeting frequency. Um, so I found uh, one client who's an individual client, uh, so not yet attached to a group, and, uh, and was linked to the Premier League. Uh, if I can think of a few more, I would enter them, and you can enter as many names as you like here to select all of the clients. You can also add clients to a group later. Um, and then I'd click Next, see an actual overview of the information and the clients that I've attached to the group. And then the group is created, and you can immediately see the group information. Um, if I jump back to the dashboard, you can also use the search feature to, um, to search for the actual group. And I've pulled it up there. Or on groups, you can go just to the list of all of the groups. And here you see all of the groups entered into the system. Uh, and you can search using any information in the tables. So if I just enter Premier League, for example, you can see all of the ones here. And if I click on my team, Tottenham, you can see all of the different members linked to that particular group. You can add notes to the group. You can add documents if necessary. And you can view the actual details of the clients by clicking on the little eye. So I clicked on one client there. Does that answer your question, Keith? Does that give a little overview of how we've done groups? Uh, yes, Cameron, yeah, thanks very much for that. It's clear. No problem. I'm sorry for the problem with both screen and sound. <laughs> So I'm not sure what the best approach would be here. I, I'm very happy to throw it open to any questions, either at Sander or myself. There is um, a question and, uh, in the and chat. then just to demo any particular bits that people would like to see. Uh, question in chat, you said. Uh, groups are still missing the uh, the rhythm. Sorry, Amit, I think that question came from you. I, I'm uh, not sure what you mean by the group rhythm. As for the transferring of clients to other groups, um, the transferring of clients to other groups is, is possible right now by removing it from one group, transferring it to the other. Um, I know right now, although the clients are shown as part of the groups, they're actually individual loans. Um, Keith, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you use the joint lending group methodology that's also built into the platform right now, um, you cannot just move clients between groups. Um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, Sander, right now at the moment, you it's you can you know move clients around in groups, and regardless of whether they have active loans or whatever, um, you can do that because usually they're just associated with a an individual loan, so you can move them from one group into another, yeah. And that's there at the moment in the platform. Yes. Yes. But of course you can, well, what we can, what we did is, is uh, in, in our implementation of the Mifos X platform, we can assign the rights and roles uh, and essentially any button that you see can be given or refused for any client and any role. And that means that if in the case of um, removing a user from a group and adding him to another group, you can limit that by um, taking away the rights and roles from any standard users. So just jumping in here, just to, uh, just to build upon uh, some of this point about how we've done permissions. Under the configuration, we would go to roles. You can, we've only got a few roles set up in the system so far. Um, but these are completely customizable. You can just create new roles if you like. And then each role can be assigned permissions. So depending on the role, so data entry officer, for example, um, you have different modules within MLite. So we'll click the client. And you can see that a data entry officer um, can't approve the client and also can't view the pending approval clients. Uh, and can't view pending approval here either. Um, whereas a branch manager uh, has different rights. They can't actually create any client details, but can approve clients, they can view clients, um, and they can view pending approval. So if I, just, uh, if I just log out now as a super user, 
and I log back in as a branch manager. Uh, you can see immediately that we lose all of the quick links for new client or enter repayment or enter loan application because those are not rights we associate with a branch manager. We no longer have the accounting uh, module. We no longer have the configuration. Uh, and on clients, you can't create a client. You can just view a list of clients on the groups. Uh, exactly the same. Um, however, if I were to log in as a data entry officer, you can see that these data entry officer tasks have now come back. And on clients, I can register clients. However, when I go to a list of clients, I can no longer see the tab here for pending approval because we've disabled the, uh, the option to approve clients and to view pending approval clients. Um, I'm just going to log back in as a super user. Amit, to go into your question quickly, um, the current implementation that we, we've done for the microfinance institutions that we're currently working with is a, a joint lending group implementation but doesn't use, for instance, the standard center group model yet. And therefore, uh, it might look a little bit different than um, the way you're used to working. Um, all I can say is, is what we've seen with in working with both the Mifos X platform and, and building it into, into the front end we built, that it's relatively easy to adapt it to, to any specific workflow or rules uh, that you'd like your organization to work with. That's actually one of the, the beauties that we've seen when building MLight. Um, a lot of what we show here is, is, is less flexible than, than what the demo app shows you or than the platform allows you to, but it's more an implementation of, of a best practice microfinance in East Africa. So I think there was also a question from uh, from 168827165, which was, uh, what of a group client graduating to an individual client? Uh, the way we currently operate is essentially all clients are individuals in the sense that all the loans are given to clients on, a, on an individual basis. The client is not given a, a group loan. Um, what that means is groups are, are basically administrative bodies in the system. Um, and if you wanted to remove a client from a group and treat them as an individual client now, uh, then you simply go to uh, to the client in question or to the group in question. And you would just remove the client from the group, like so. And now if I go back to clients, uh, you can see a list of just all individual clients. Uh, here, so that's the client we just removed and you can see they're now individual. Uh, I'm completely prepared to say that this is not a, a functionality we thought hugely about yet. Um, all of the MFIs who we're in discussions with and working with uh, are using a group men lending methodology rather than individual. Uh, Ed, do you have any other questions, maybe on Skype? Uh, so Emit just asked for uh, export to Excel. So maybe if we just go to list of all of the clients. I'll make it into a bigger list. At the bottom here, we can just export to Excel. And on my desktop now, yeah. if I open that, you can see here, it's pretty straightforward for me now just to see a list of all of the clients who we exported, um, linked to the group name, the branch, uh, and it's very easy for me if I wanted to, to start doing analysis on that. Uh, and the same works for all of the loans or uh, any of the reports. And you can do the same, well, yeah, the reports, uh... 
have of course a little bit more information and if you export those to Excel uh, you can also use them for instance the OB uh, functionality to, to drill down in your portfolio. Yeah. The transferring of clients between groups and branches uh, is, is something we're still working on uh, together with Keith and, and John and Vishwash, uh, essentially the Mifos team uh, and discussing because uh, that's always a tricky area in, in any microfinance system. Maybe Keith, you can give a little update or Vishwash. Yeah, sure, Sandra. Um, yeah, like you say, it's 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 a key it's a key thing that we want to support with the sort of transfers of branches. Um, people tend to talk about splitting branches and merging branches and things like that. So uh, it's definitely a key area that we're working on. It's 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 sort of coming soon to the platform. You know, it um, it should be. So um, I, I I can't remember. I think we have you know we have uh, transferring of loan officers. I think from branches, but. Um, we really just have to get into just move um, moving clients and groups and basically just be we have to just do some detail there to track it um, so we can we collect that information correctly so we can do the historical reporting correctly on it. And on the accounting integrated with disbursement, this is actually I'm one of the your question. Your question. That's actually one of the beauties okay, of the some. current platform. Um, in discussions with uh, with uh, the the Mifos t Mifos X team, we we discussed how you would uh, do a good integration of both accounting with uh, with your portfolio, which is now already integrated. So any booking in terms of repayments, um, disbursements, uh, writing off of loans, interest allocation, that's all automatically done. Whenever that action is performed in the portfolio, the, the correct bookings are made. So the whole accounting is real time. The guys did a really great job. Uh, one of the, the actually quite distinct features of Mifos X that, that is not really present in, in too many other systems, uh, which, which I really like is, Cameron, if you can quickly show the product setup, is in, when setting up a product, um, you can also specify what is called uh, advanced um, accounting rules and those advanced accounting rules they allow you to for instance say any fee that you charge can be uh, allocated to a specific GL any um, penalty that you charge can allocate it to a specific GL and also and this works really well when you start dealing with mobile money or or have for instance multiple bank accounts work with checks and cash combined work with mobile money you can also decide uh, for any payment type, which is the one you saw us selecting when we did the disbursement in the demo. You can say, well, if this is an M-Pesa payment, we want the system to make the, the credit booking when disbursing to the M-Pesa account or the debit booking when uh, a repayment comes in. And this is all fully integrated. This works really, really well. Um, and well, all thanks for this go actually to, to Fishwash. So there was one question that was just Polly. <laughs> I didn't understand what that meant. No, I think she was uh, clarifying that that was her her name. All oh, right, so, okay. Uh, I'm that because yeah, she just came up <laughs> as the ID. So, <laughs> so I'm a little slow today. <laughs> no, but this has been yeah a fantastic uh, d demo, Cameron Sander, like the. You know the interface you've built and the extensions you've built on top of the platform. I think do a wonderful job, really showing yeah all the functionality that our team has built in, and what you can can do with it. And I think the questions have been good. We've gotten some you've gotten some good feedback, and I think it's helped to dig in more into what you've built. And then do you have any information, Cameron, you'd like to share on you know who like which regions you're targeting to bring on customers who are interested in M Light? If there are any folks on the call who might be in one of those target regions right now, so uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but first, I'd like to say that um, that the well, basically, to extend a, a huge thank you uh, to yourself, Keith, Dishwash, John, uh, everyone from the 
from the Mifos X team because we we've really really enjoyed working with you so far. Um, the Mifos X product is fantastic to work with, uh, and we've been incredibly impressed by uh, by the speed at which uh, at which new development and new functionality is picked up, and by the close collaboration we've had with uh, with everyone in the team. Uh, so I'd just like to well, kind of defer. Uh, what's the pass my thanks back on to you and everyone else and I'm sure Sandra feels the same way in yeah, terms absolutely. of uh, in terms of sorry Sandra no sorry I was just saying absolutely and and before you All go right. into to the rest I also like to say that from our end both uh, Cameron and myself we would be happy um, to to receive any any questions or uh, other inquiries both about how we did this from a technology technology perspective and and well essentially what you've seen in the demo feel free to to come to us and ask yeah definitely uh, and uh, ed I, i'm not sure i presume that everyone on the call probably has now both mine and sander's skype details or email addresses or anything like that My yeah, and if they don't, we can resend them them out once yeah. again. So, <laughs> no worries. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of what our goals are for the short term uh, and what are where we are targeting, um, as I said, we don't actually have any live users of this platform yet, uh, so it's still very early days. Um, we have signed agreements with two microfinance institutions, however, one in Kenya and one in Tanzania, uh, which is incredibly exciting from our end. Uh, it'll be our first live customers. And, um, and we expect to go live with each of them in the next month. Um, after that, we, we're actually expecting there to be uh, a short period where we're going to be getting lots and lots of feedback, lots and lots of learning, uh, and there will be lots and lots of demonstration, uh, sorry, development that will occur on the platform um, based on the feedback from our early clients. Um, at the same time, we have a lot of functionality that we'd like to build into the system based on our experiences with Masoni Kenya. Uh, and there are, there are three main uh, additional bits of functionality we've got lined up for the for the medium term. One of them is the PPI integration. Uh, so this has already been integrated into the system we use with Nisseni Kenya, um, but we obviously now want to also integrate it into into Nisseni Light. So both the capturing of all of the uh, all of the data related to the ten PPI questions, uh, depending on which uh, country the MFI is based in, uh, but also all the analytics and all of the uh, automatic uh, analysis around around calculating the likelihood of someone being above and below the um, uh, above and below the uh, poverty line. Uh, the next bit is the SMS module. So we, uh, we want to integrate an automated SMS module to enable the uh, automatic sending of personalized messages to clients if they're in arrears uh, or if they you, know, you want to thank them for taking out a loan or if there's a national holiday. Uh, and the final and the biggest one is the, uh, the development of an app uh, that will run on Android that will be used uh, in the same way as, as we do with Masoni Kenya to capture information in the field, such as client registrations, PPI, group registrations, uh, and most importantly, loan applications. Uh, so that's a little bit of our, our own roadmap and our own pipeline uh, for the next six months or so. Now, obviously, a key part of our platform, uh, we hope, is the integration with mobile money. And the area where we have the most experience with this so far is, uh, is with M-Pesa in Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, and with MTN mobile money in Uganda, uh, and so for the uh, for the time being, these are our, well, these are the markets we are actively targeting. Uh, however, we expect that in the very near future, uh, we would like to start targeting markets beyond East Africa, uh, and indeed, we'd be very happy to start speaking to anyone who uh, who was able to recommend anyone for us to speak to. I would very much like to speak with you uh, about this platform for West Africa. We are working on a, in Nigeria, we're working on an initiative to do exactly what you are doing in Kenya. Uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we'd be very happy to start speaking straight away. Very good. We'll do it. <laughs> have your Great. contact information somewhere in this Skype session or Citrix session, I hope. Uh, yeah, I've, I've just dropped my email and and Sanders into uh, into the chat. Excellent, thank you. No problem at all.
uh, are we able to provide a, a demo link? Uh, I think I'll hand over to Sandra for that one. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll um, first, I'd like to, after this, make sure that we, we don't have any, any sensitive data in it um, that, that we first need to remove. So uh, if it's okay with all of you, I'll post it to the user list uh, maybe tomorrow morning. That sounds good. It's on there. And then, yeah, to everybody who's uh, just still on the call, just, uh, yeah, like one piece of, like, update information while I have you, and then we'll let you go, because I know we're a little bit over with the technical difficulties we had initially. I just wanted to share the link to the uh, Summit website. I'll put it in the the chat for the GoToMeeting and the Skype chat. But this is just the yeah initial website for the the summit. We've got a, a rough agenda there, but we've got links to registration. I'll soon have the links to the conference or the summit scholarships up very soon. But this will just give you a sense of you know the summit that we're going to be hosting in Jaipur this year. We're expanding a bit. We're going to have an exposition hall for our new technologies and vendors. We're going to have an awards dinner. We'll have our site visits once again with uh, Amit Jain at Degomber this time. And we're really looking forward to everybody being able to attend. So please browse the site. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll have more details of the agenda. And we'll be you know, reaching out to you for ideas on sessions. And then we'll have the detailed scholarship applications posted uh, within the next day to the site. So. And Keith or Vishwas, was there anything real quick you wanted to update on just what any new functionalities that have gone into the Mifos X platform right now? Not really, Ed. I mean, we, we, we've gone in terms of official release, we're at 1.4.1 now. Um, there'll be upcoming 1.5, 1.6, which is a sort of a better focus in on the some of the areas around the group, like even just what Sandra said there around possibly even transfers and things like that and also savings savings related functionality so savings will be moving into a public release soon enough um, and that's sort of the upcoming work and um, we're just progressing on it as usual basically yeah okay okay yeah and yeah. for all the oh, I think there's a little bit of echo no, but just, yeah, just wanted to reiterate that, yeah, with this Mifos X platform now, I mean, we've got this platform available in which, you know, any of our specialists or MFIs or developers out there could, you know, build similar interfaces and applications on top of it. But, yeah, our platform will also just be generally applicable to those who might need to use it out of the box, and we'll be delivering our, you know, user interface and user experience improvements as suggested by Deanna on that over the next coming months as well. So thanks again to everybody who was on the call and uh, Cameron and Sander for that great demo and echoing you know what they've said. Kudos to Keith, John, Vishwas, and everybody on the Mifos X development team for all the hard work for making this possible. And one final thank you from, from both Sandra and myself, uh, both for all of the work done by, by the great team so far, and also for the opportunity to speak today. And anyone, we'd love to welcome feedback, questions, anything at any point in time. Okay. So thank you all. Thanks much, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, and yeah, and Sander has been kind enough to record this session, so once we've got that... Uh, available in an easy to access format. We'll share that with you all so you can view it once again and for those who missed the call too. So, so thank you guys. Thank you.